Hello, this is Fat Puppy coming to you from Lake City, South Carolina. Is this not an odd place for a cemetery? A warehouse right there behind it? I'm gonna tell a few stories from this cemetery. There's a gentleman here who died from a shotgun trap. He, a trap was set and he was killed. That's gonna be in here too. So there's gonna be several stories in this, short stories, the sh shotgun trap's probably gonna be the longest one. This is the first one I can find. It'd be the oldest one here. And I'm gonna put this down a little bit further so that you can see the stone better in just a second. By the way, that's not a warehouse. Um, that was a boat place, like a boat you go fishing in. They used to sell boats there. And it just backs up right against the cemetery. I'm sure the cemetery was here first. Uh, best as I can tell, this used to be the Godwin farm. There's still a lot of Godwins that live in this area. I was looking them up and there's still a lot of them in this area, right here in this area. And so this was the Godwin farm. That right there is Sarah J. Godwin. And I'm gonna see if I can get this down here where you can right, see it. here we are. This is Sarah J. Godwin. She was born in 1841 and she died in 1922. Uh, Miss Sarah Jane never got married, never had any children. She lived until she was 81 years old. She had another sister that did the same thing. Never got married, never had any children. Now, Miss Sarah Jane died in 1922. Her other sister died in 1912. Her sister was named Mary. And like I said, she died in 1912. When she died, she is 57 years old. I haven't seen her, her tombstone here, so I don't know if she got buried here or somewhere else. So this is Miss Sarah Jane Godwin, who never got married. She died an old spinster. I apologize, it's a little bit windy here. It may affect the sound. The sun is coming in at the wrong direction, which makes these tombstones harder for you guys to see. Uh, I'm hoping though it's not an issue. I could be wrong. This is Samuel Otto Hazelton. And Mr. Sammy was in a, uh, in a car wreck. He was born in 1896 and died in 1939. Um, says he had massive head injuries. I don't remember where the car wreck happened or if it even said, but Mr. Samuel Otto Hazelton 1896 to 1939, he died of uh, massive head injuries. And keep in mind, stay, stay tuned for the story about the uh, trap gun. I'm sorry, the shotgun trap, it's on the way. And then his son died just a few years later of pneumonia. 1923 to 1945, Samuel Otto Hazelton Jr. He died of pneumonia. This is Delta Godwin. She was born in 1896 and died in 1939. And, um, she died of tuberculosis at 42 years old. Tuberculosis, terrible lung disease, just waste your lungs away. Delta Godwin, 42 years old. This is Richard Earl Godwin. He was born in 1903, died in 1951. He had married Margaret Webster in 1924. Mr. Godwin was a truck driver. He got sick about three days before he died he died three days later. He's 49 years old. Now, according to his death certificate, he had cardiac, cardiac decompensation. And I had to look that up. And basically, it's a sudden worsening of heart congestion. You know, heart congestion, heart failure, I think is what they call it now. And it's caused by high blood pressure. Now, given this was 1951, I'm not even sure that medicine had called up to what all of that was and what caused it. And here we have Ms. Laura M. Kennedy. She died at 64 years old. And I'll tell you what made this noteworthy to me was the death certificate was odd. It was not signed by a doctor. I've probably looked at over at least a hundred death certificates in doing genealogy and history research. They're always either signed by a doctor or coroner. This was signed by a magistrate, and I've never seen that before. And what it said was, 
never seen a doctor, suffered from heart troubles. And that's all it said. How odd. 1860 to 1924. It says 1859 to 1924. 64 years old, maybe 65, depending on the birth date. Did I tell you guys that I had someone here who was shot? Shotgun trap. Caught up in a shotgun trap. I'll be getting him shortly. This one here would be Miss Taylor. Slow? Slowy? I think slow would be how I'd pronounce it. Godwin Taylor. Born in 1908. Died in 1948. 39 years old. Cancer. Cancer. That terrible, evil cancer. It was uterus cancer. Mr. Clyde Ballswell took a full shotgun blast to the chest. He was born in 1906. And buried Easter Sunday, 1929. Says gone but not forgotten. This was an interesting one here. Mr. Clyde Ballswell got trapped. Basically what happened was him and some friends were riding into Lake City, coming through Scranton, which is about five miles up, four miles up, something like that. Started running out of gas. Now this is 1929. He says, let's stop. I'll go look for a gas station. Just a few seconds later, his friends heard a shotgun blast. They went running. What they found was he had been shot in the chest. They hurried up and lowered him to the car. He died before he got to the hospital. Said he just bled out, basically, is what the uh, newspaper article said. Mr. Almer Willoughby, that same, who was that same age, 20, 24 years old. Both of them are 24 years old. It was his house. He had a garage. Now, back then, they had, the garages were separate from the house. I guess he got tired of thieves because he set up a shotgun trap. The only kind I've ever seen of those is when he opened a door and the shotgun, the doorknob is attached to a, with a thread, a string, whatever, to a shotgun trigger. When you open the trigger, when you open the door, the trigger pulls the blast gets you. And that's what happened here. Mr. Almer Willoughby of Scranton. It was his house, his garage, his shotgun, his trap. He got arrested and charged. It didn't say what he got charged with. It just said what he did. Now, you know, the justice system doesn't like competition. It doesn't cotton too well to vigilantes. Mr. Willoughby did a very dangerous thing. That could have been a kid that walked in there. It could have been him in a hurry not thinking or his wife not thinking that walked in there. It was a very dangerous thing for Mr. Willoughby to do. So he was charged. And I never could find any more articles as to what happened afterwards. Sometimes you do those searches, they just don't pop up like they should. This should have popped up because everything was involved. I do know this. That happened in 1929. I looked at the 1930 census and I couldn't find him. I looked at the 1940 census and I found him. Back on the farm. If you live in Scranton or around Scranton, there's a Willoughby Road that ties right into Highway 52. That's the main road. I'm sure that's where the farm was. I don't know if the house is still there anymore. I wouldn't know which one it was if I rode by there. So this tells me that 1939, he was probably in prison. I'm thinking he got either five or 10 years. I'm sure he got something. Like I said, justice doesn't like um. They don't like competition. They don't like vigilantes, because sometimes vigilantes can be wrong. Well, the neat thing about Mr. Willoughby is it ain't been that long ago that he died. Now, this happened in 1929. Mr. Willoughby died at age of 93 in the year 2000. Don't forget to give it a thumbs up, and don't forget to subscribe.